Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube, also on Rumble. Uh, at least some of these videos are going up on Rumble uh, because I figured, you know, if I'm going to be preaching the dogma of uh, redundancy and whatnot and putting your videos in multiple places, we talked yesterday about that, then it would be a bit silly of me not to do that myself. So uh, I'm not too sure what I think about Rumble yet, but... Uh, uh, for the sake of duplication, simply, I'm putting these back up in archive videos, or at least some of them up there. So uh, check out Daniel's Tech World on Rumble if you're a Rumbler. Um, so today we're kind of moving through the optical media videos. I keep thinking I'm at the end of them and then I say, nah, there's more There's more to talk about. It's quite a rich world of uh, optical media archival out there. I want to show today a little utility called DVD Disaster that is excellent. Um, the unfortunate thing is I guess this was... This is on Ubuntu Linux, by the way. I compiled this from source, uh, so it's not not there in the repos, at least not that I was aware of or I could find. Uh, but you can download it from GitHub and uh, build it. And um, it's a little utility. It can do a lot, actually. Uh, you can read your optical disk image uh, directly to a mounted drive, and it's actually super... Hang on, I'll show you guys. Although it's not liking... It's not liking the medium that I have at all. It's showing it as full as errors, but I thought this was very cool. It uh, shows you, oh, now it's now it's reading okay. That's very strange. This is amazing. Look at the little thing moving. It's reading through the disk and you can actually see where it's reading and it's verifying that stuff is okay. Uh, and if there are bad sectors, uh, it will throw up a error and you can see the graph here populating about the right speed. I think this is amazing. I think if I can, if I could finally show so, uh, someone skeptical about optical media that it's quite interesting, this uh, they might be they might be swayed. So all looking good. That's kind of cool. So I'll just stop that because I don't actually need to do this, uh, and I am going to relaunch the program, and we will go back to what we were intending to do. Okay. So what I need to what you the way this this DVD disaster program works is that it takes an ISO, a disk image, and um, then it will create ECC data. So we looked in the last video about creating parity data and we put some parity data onto a CD and we also copied it off site as I, off medium, I guess is a better term. As I said, it's probably a good idea because if your dog uh, swallows your CD, he will not be distinguishing between the original data and the parity data. So in other words, uh, you want to keep it somewhere else or on both places. You can do both. Uh, it is storage is cheap these days. I, I say if you have space on the disk and space on wherever else you put it, why not? Um, but today we're going to be looking at ECC. So I'm no expert on the, on the difference at all, but uh, the internet tells me that ECC error correction code is considered more advanced than regular parity data. Uh, anyway, let's just do this. So what I'm going to do here on Ubuntu is I'm going to just um, make an ISO, in this case, out of one single MP4. I just want to say as kind of a sidebar, if you want to password protect your, uh, your the stuff you're putting on CDs, uh, optical media, which is important really, if you're putting them somewhere off-site you don't really trust, there are, of course, way more sophisticated ways to do this through encryption. But if you just want to password protect the thing, um, on Ubuntu at least, you can go 7Z or you can actually a bunch of compression formats have the option here to enter a password. You get it by clicking on, onto other options. I just discovered this today. Um, 7, 7Z is quite a, becoming quite a popular uh, compression tool. It usually squashes things a decent amount and you can also add password protection under zip but not under ISO. So, okay, I'm going to just do an ISO and takes literally an instant to uh, take my mp4 file and as you can see it's actually added a small amount of data it's actually got the files got a small bit larger and now I can uh, now I can go and create my ECC code out of this ISO. One thing about the user interface of DVD disaster that I would say is not amazing there's actually a couple of, of little grievances I have with it for one when I read the did the reading thing I couldn't figure out how to get back to the start of it um, let me just also show quickly because I don't I don't think I'll be doing multiple videos about DVD info just a couple more little nooks and crannies of the tool you can find out a little bit of information um, under medium info it doesn't read off like a huge amount. The manufacturer ID here isn't specified, but you might be able to pull some information out of the 
uh, out of the CD this way. Some people like to do that. They think they can figure out exactly what manufacturing line something came out of. Um, so there's a little bit of info there. Uh, then you also have a preferences menu. Uh, so there's actually a few little options here where you can say, uh, wait for the drive. There is uh, one option that might save you a little bit of time is you can um, uh, you can choose to manually, where did I see it? Uh, automatic file creation and deletion, auto create error correction file after reading an image. So you can just automatically say, if you're reading something, uh, generate the ECC code. Um, and the other thing to say, read attempts, error correction, storage methods, redundancy for new error correction files. So by default, it's set to normal and you can actually play around with the amount of ECC as we did in the last video. And I, as I explained, the general principle with uh, parity and error correction code is that the more you generate, the more screwed up, <laughs> well, it's not the wrong word, the more corrupt the original file goes, you'll be able to recover from. So if you have a bunch of, I mean, I feel like storage is so cheap these days that again, you may, you can crank this all the way up to 64.5% redundancy, but I'm just going to keep it at its uh, default level, um, which creates 14.3% is what it does by default. So that's cool to know. Um, and I don't see anything else that's super important here. So what I'm going to do now is tell us uh, where the ISO is uh, that I want to create the ECC code against here. Lovely. And the one thing I said, remember I said I didn't like something about the interface here. It's this, it's that it dumps it out um, at a peculiar place that in the program itself. Um, and when you go create, selects a new error correction file. I had to, to kind of create it in a place. So this hasn't been created yet. Uh, what's the video called? Uh, content, I keep forgetting this, content creators, content creators.ecc. So now, now that I've done that, it's going to put it on my desktop as uh, and give it that file name. But it, it looks to me like it's only a selection thing, but it's not, as you will see in a second. So now we want to go for create. So we have the ISO, it's putting it here, create. And as you can see, this doesn't take very long. And as you can see also, it's put it where I wanted to, with the name I wanted it. And this is great. So it gives you a little friendly message, message here. The uh, ECC code was successfully created. Make sure to keep this medium on, this file on a reliable medium. So I'm just gonna see how big this was. 42 megs, uh, which um, which you can which should be 14.3 percent of whatever the original file was. So now that I have this ECC code, what do I do with it? As I mentioned, it's really no different from par from the parity data in the in the sense that we can put this on the disk, we can put this on the disk and on our and on a separate system, or people might be of the opinion that there's no point putting this on the disk itself just put it on your local system and i think it's really kind of uh, a pub argument as to which of those is the best i would tend to go with both you may as well uh, but certainly don't only put it on the disc is what i would personally think makes the most sense hope this video has been interesting um thanks for watching another video here and if you want to get more do subscribe wherever you watch this